Hello everyone, um, here we are again with a new video, a little update from our corner of the world. Thank you so much for your comments on our last vlog and for your continuous support. If you are new here and like what you see, don't forget to subscribe, like and comment and also hit the notification bell to get notified every time a new video is up. Your support means a lot to us both. Spring has finally arrived after our last snowy adventure. The soil is becoming warmer and ready for new seeds, new season, new life. Sun is rising much earlier these days and our dogs are waking us up with it. Not desirable, but it feels good, I have to say. We had a lot of rain this winter, which is great because the summer is slowly approaching and who knows how it's going to pan out this year. Cherry trees are in full bloom now, grass is growing again and the air is full of bees and insects working hard to pollinate all they can. I've started sowing seeds in the polytunnel and also outside but thanks to the amount of rain we received lately the garden has to wait a little longer as it is currently too wet to receive new seeds. So instead I've been weeding around fruit bushes and fertilizing the beds. I've been making sourdough bread for some time, experimenting with different flour ratios and starters. One happy accident led to my so far perfect recipe. Sometimes when you do things regularly or automatically, you stop paying attention to what you're doing. And that's exactly what happened one morning when preparing the dough. Usually I would use 300 grams of rye flour and 200 grams of spout. I would weigh the flour, set it aside and prepare a wet mixture of starter and water. Then I would combine the two, wait 15 minutes before adding salt and then perform several folds every half an hour before leaving the dough to proof. When I got round the first fold, the dough felt somewhat different surprised me and after some thinking I realized I used ordinary white flour instead of rye. First I was worried it would ruin my bread but to my surprise when I baked the bread the next day it came out beautifully. It has risen well, created a great crack and tasted even better.
Since then I only use this recipe and it never fails. You see, nothing happens without a reason. Even this bread. <laughs> I can see Bailey is enjoying a ride, Mamba as well. Gaia and Woody are following. Uh, Susanna has chopped some of the um, dead olives. We have given them a couple of years, well, a year and a half really, to recuperate after the fires, but it hasn't happened. And so, because we don't have a big chainsaw, because I never wanted one. Uh, to me, it's too dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. And then we have just this little saw, <laughs> uh, battery operated, which Susanna used. And we are going to pick uh, the wood she chopped because it is going to get cold again, believe it or not. Today is like 23 degrees. It's Sahara dust. That's why there isn't much sun. Um, I think you can get the idea. It's very, it's like misty almost. Um, yeah, but it's very warm. It's very warm, which is great. And you can see Susanna in, is in her shorts. <laughs> so yeah, so first we thought naively we're gonna take the wood up in the wheelbarrow. Well, after first round, Susanna decided it's time for a car. So here we are. <laughs> under supervision of the dogs yeah and they are hot already and it's only uh, almost the end of march so hmm i hope we're not gonna get too hot summer or extreme summer but it can happen The biggest pains um, of living in Portugal are the cars, believe it or not. Cars are just terrible here. <laughs> so I believe this is our third or no, fourth car actually <laughs> uh, in six years. And um, although it's four by four, it's not a very good one, you know. 
Uh, we used to have better 4x4 before Cariña, but that one had issues with the head gasket, that blue, so we had to opt out and um, bought another one, which that was all we could afford at that time, so we are stuck with this. And this is the usual problem when it's a little bit too wet or slippery. It just can't get up <laughs> off any any hill. Uh, it's like a small, you know. So we've done this before. Um, and so we are doing this again. So Susanna's scraping off the grass. <laughs> Fresh grass. <laughs> yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, the other, if we can't get up, even with this, then <laughs> the only option is to go down Roman Road, which is very bumpy indeed. So, and we have never driven down, and it's quite a way <laughs> to get down to the valley. So, hopefully, hopefully it'll be okay. Well, we'll manage. We'll see. Yeah. So, scraping, scraping, joys of kind of almost off-grid living in Portugal. Come on, come on. <laughs> oh, well done. Well, we made it. <laughs> I'm really happy that we made it because it was a bit of a... Ah, oh, touch and go. Um, talking about cars, cars in Portugal are extremely old, they are extremely expensive, and they are extremely <laughs> like badly maintained. So you never know what you're buying. And yeah, unless you have lots of money and you can spend, I don't know, 15,000 on a relatively new car, maybe yeah. 10 years old. Yeah, which majority of people like us don't have, you know, people don't have that kind of money. And um, yeah, and then you can't rely on the mechanics because they are kind of a cowboys, majority of them, or at least those we've um, experienced, we've encountered. So we cannot really rely on that either. So yeah, uh, the only thing what you can do is to live with it. Mm. My grandmother was a great seamstress and I would watch her put together many garments not only for our family but also for strangers and friends. My mother also used to sew but she didn't particularly like it. I had an interest in sewing, however my mother didn't want me to use the machine saying I would ruin it. So being true to myself, I would wait for my mum to go to work and then I would try sewing without a clue how to use the machine, how to thread the needle, how to adjust the tension and so forth. And because in those days mum had an old machine where you needed to use the pedal to make it work, it certainly was another skill to practice to successfully produce anything. And she was right. I always messed the machine up, and not just once. However, she would still not teach me how to do it. I remember we had a sewing class um, at school and I produced a simple apron, which I was very proud of. That was the only thing I have made until Susanna got me an electric sewing machine for Christmas one year. Mm -hmm. 
I started with simple cushion covers and small stuffed toys and slowly transitioned to easy long skirts and dresses and trousers. I learned through written tutorials as well as watching people on YouTube. I had to figure out how to read patterns and the instructions also as the terminology was alien to me. With time I got better at it and started freestyling, making my own patterns from favourite pieces, repurposing old sheets or curtains to make bags and more. You know, every skill you have cannot be taken away from you. Every skill you hone will get better with practice and time. And you can rely more on yourself and your skills. One thing leads to another and with every small success you are encouraged to do and learn more. It's a great feeling to be able to produce something yourself and use it. What have you learned recently? What skills do you have or wish to have? Let me know in the comments below. This happens almost every year. Spring comes early, wakes everything up and then the winter hits back with revenge. And this year is no different. I didn't want to believe the forecast saying it would snow, but it did. Cold front has reached the mountains again. Violent gusts up to 100 km per hour have been battering the trees in bloom and we wonder how this will affect the fruit trees in particular. Relentless downpours have disabled progress outside and even the dogs like to take refuge inside by the fire. We are grateful for the firewood we have and the possibility to make a fire anytime we want to keep us warm and comfortable. At times like these, we appreciate how we live. Both of us are working from home and therefore don't have to travel anywhere. As long as we have enough wood and food, we are happy to stay put and wait for better weather to come. In the meantime, there is always something to do inside. Talking about more skills, being an artist isn't just about talent. It takes hours and even years to practice, to learn, to be uncomfortable with what you see. Try different techniques and materials until you find the right ones for you. Challenging yourself every day, stepping out of your comfort zone, all this is beneficial in order to progress and become better at whatever it is you are doing or wish to improve at. <laughs> 